Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Ross, for your willingness to serve this country and um, the position of Secretary of Commerce. As you know, the Department of Commerce has put a lot of work into thinking of ways to encourage the growth of the Internet of Things, and I commend the Department for those efforts. Senators Booker and Gardner and Schatz and myself, we recently reintroduced the Digit Act, which would create a working group convened by the Department of Commerce to make recommendations to Congress on ways to advance the Internet of Things. As Secretary, would you plan to continue the Department's efforts to collaborate with both private stakeholders and other government entities, including Congress, to encourage the development of the Internet of Things? Well, I think all aspects of Internet need encouragement. There are issues, technical issues, privacy issues, and such as that that come up, so it's not a simple subject. But when President-elect Trump convened the meeting of the high-tech CEOs some weeks ago, uh, I, he was kind enough to have me be very much involved with that. And I, I was impressed with how willing the high-tech people were to work with the new administration to try to deal with these kinds of issues, e even though, as it happens during the campaign, we were not necessarily the recipient of much support from them. So I think that was a very good thing, and some of those leaders have followed up with me subsequently with some more specific suggestions. So I look forward to a constructive relationship in that series of areas. That's good to hear. As you know, the Internet of Things, when we, when we look at all that can be uh, created and the innovation that takes place and, and really the business growth for entrepreneurs, it, um, it's going to be a huge area for growth in this sector and one that um, I've enjoyed working with on a, on a bipartisan basis with members of this committee. We also discussed uh, during our meeting that agriculture is the economic engine of the state of Nebraska. In fact, uh, cattle outnumber people four to one in our state, and Nebraskans work very hard to produce food, fiber, and fuel for the rest of the world. In 2015, Nebraska's agricultural exports amounted to roughly 6.4 billion, and of that, our delicious Nebraska beef exports accounted for about one billion. And that is why access to global markets is really extremely important to uh, my constituents, all the people of Nebraska. If confirmed, uh, what approach do you believe that you will take to ensure that we have those global market opportunities and that they are available uh, for industries like Nebraska where we can continue to grow and develop? Well, agriculture certainly is one of the industries where we remain the world leader in technology and in execution. So it's one of the very strong points of our economy. Second of all, many of the other countries, our trading partners, literally cannot feed themselves. So they're going to have to buy food from somewhere outside. Take China, for example. Only 13% of that huge land mass is arable because so much of it is desert, so much is mountainous, so much is just not farmable. So there are some structural disadvantages that many of our trading partners have where they very much need us. I think that is actually not something to be feared in those negotiations. I think it's one of our strengths. Yes, obviously. China's soybeans basically come from two places, U.S. and Brazil. I don't know where they would get the soybeans if somehow they tried to cut us off. Right. Thank you. Uh, there was some talk earlier about um, federally held spectrum, which uh, the NTIA has a very important role in making more spectrum available for commercial use which I think is a laudable goal. I'm also a member of the Senate's Armed Services Committee, and as such, I believe it is also very important that the agencies that are responsible for protecting the homeland have the spectrum that they need to do that. As Secretary of Commerce, how would you approach the task of, of balancing 
the commercial sectors need for additional spectrum while still um, obviously recognizing but also um, putting as a priority the importance of our national security and making sure we have the spectrum needed to to uh, defend this country. Well, for sure, the the first the, the vast majority of the federally occupied spectrum that's unused now is in the hands of the Department of Defense. So, first objective has to be do no harm. We can't compromise national defense, homeland security, at all. But we also need to be rational, and it can't be that there's hoarding. And I think one of the tricky problems is how do you incentivize any department that has the spectrum to give it up? I think that's the trickiest part, is how to motivate them to do so, and that's something we should all give some thought to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair.